watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to GHS TV's award-winning talk show, Crosstalk. I'm your host, Shiloh Sanders. Each week, we discuss topics that are important to our diverse community. This week, we are exploring aviation programs in the Mid-South and how young adults and students train and excel in their desired career of aviation. The Look Weathers Flight Academy offers rigorous training courses that provides exposure to the history of aviation, fundamentals of aerodynamics, air traffic control procedures, and aerospace technologies. They are dedicated to the encouragement and advancement of minorities in all aviation and aerospace careers. Here to tell us more about the program is Jermelia Taylor, General Manager and Car Carolyn Bratcher, Certified Flight Instructor. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you Thank so you. much. So I want to first start off by asking who is Luke Weathers Jr. and why was the Flight Academy named after him? Luke Weathers Jr., well, we chose to name the Flight Academy after Luke Weathers Jr. because he was a very prolific man for the city of Memphis, state of Tennessee, state of Mississippi, even Alaska as well. Um, he was a World War II veteran as well as a Tuskegee Airman. During World War II, he shot down seven enemy planes. He shot down two in one day. And in 1945, Memphis was like, this is huge. So they decided to honor him with a parade on Beale Street on June 25th, 1945. Thousands of people came out to celebrate him and they gave him a key to the city. He was the first black man to receive a key to the city of Memphis. He was also the first to receive a key to the state of Mississippi. Um, and he was also the first black air traffic controller for Memphis International Airport. So what does it mean for you guys to work at Luke Weathers, which is the only African-American flight academy in the Mid-South area? And I'll start with you, Ms. Well, for us, we're changing lives daily. Um, it's, it's a start for people. It's the start of the rest of their career. And it starts with the youth. So for me, starting with them as young as 16, getting them in, you know, it's, it's amazing for me. And then I'm pretty sure for Carlin, you know, <laughs> she gets to fly with them. So, mm -hmm. And as well for me, um, getting to meet different people, uh, from all walks of life, they uh, come there from different places, California, Ghana, uh, Florida, even myself, I came from Michigan to be a student at the school. So um, I can also speak for myself being a student, coming there and getting trained um, was just mind blowing to me because when I started this journey, I didn't get to see people that looked like me or even people in my family that want to explore aviation. So as an instructor at the school, it's it's given me um, a different view on um, teaching black young uh, students. So what inspired you to get into aviation? That's a great question. What inspired me? Um, I simply, I love heights. And then I feel like every day that I get to wake up and look at the sky is a blessing to me. And that's simply, it, I didn't have any um, family members or people in my life that uh, said, hey, you can do this as a career. It was always, you can be nursing, or you can um, just do simple things that be a math teacher and not discrediting those uh, opportunities or jobs. But I'm glad that, you know, I got to just take the time to move myself um, further than what I thought I could ever do. So Ms. Taylor, Luke Weathers is a part of OBAP. Can mm -hmm. you tell us what OBAP is and what does this organization specialize in? So OBAP stands for the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. OBAP, the main goal is to get more people who look like me and you in the aviation industry. And how do we do that? With our youth programs, because it starts with our youth. So if we get youth interested in our ACE programs or the Solo Flight Academy or have APIS come represent at your school, that's a start. And then from there, you start flight training with us at Luke Weathers. And then from there, the ball is rolling. So OBAP, the main goal is to put, like I said, more um, more black and brown, more um, diversity in the aviation industry. And our goal and how we do that is through our youth programs. 
So I was a student at Luke Weathers over the summer last year, but before I decided I wanted to do the summer camp, I did a discovery flight. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us what a discovery flight is like and how can students or kids sign up to see if this is something they want to pursue? Um, so to sign up, y'all will just call me. <laughs> You'll give me a call and from there I set you up with an instructor like Ms. Bratcher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, she'll take you up for about 45 minutes, but then I'll let Ms. Bratcher speak about what she does with students or potential students during the discovery flight. So when after after they come to me and they want to do a discovery flight, um, I take them outside, I let them do the pre-flight, which is a walk around, showing them different, um, the ailerons, the primary flight controls of the aircraft and how it actually works. And then once uh, I show them all the safety um, and give them a briefing, we get inside the aircraft and then um, we first make contact with ground, then tower, we do our last uh, run up. Um, when we get down to the run up area before we take off, I show them, um, I tell them all the steps, even allowing them to take off as well. Of course, I also have controls with them, but really when we get in the air, allowing them to fly and see do, how do they like it? Because if I'm just up there flying, they're not really getting the full experience. So letting them fly, do shallow turns or descent or climbs um, allows them to see like if I really like this or not. So what does an average day at Luke Weathers look like for you as a flight instructor and as for you as the general manager? <laughs> for me as a general manager, it looks like I'm in probably a lot of meetings. I don't know, but outside of meetings, um, of course, giving tours of the flight academy, letting people see what we are, what we are, what we do, letting them see the aircraft, um, doing onboarding for students as they come in, giving them the, all the necessary paperwork that they need to start flight training, letting them know that they need their first, second, or third class medical, letting them know of the Cessna tracking application kit that they'll need to complete, um, you know, getting them started, and then on top of that, pretty much running the whole flight school. <laughs> but no, but um, just working closely with our instructors, our maintenance team, our flight operations specialists, um, I'm just pretty much the liaison for everybody. When, every, when anybody needs um, anything, any questions about anything, hey, what's going on in my account? What can I do to start flying? Well, you know, what do I, I need another plan for my flight training. Then they come and they talk to me. Mm -hmm. And then for myself, I do a lot. Of, I'm one of the instructors that have been there the longest. So I have about 13 students. So from day to day, I'm probably meeting with about eight of them. Uh, starting from the morning, whether it's either lessons on the ground where I have to teach them, depending on where they are, if they're at the beginning of their private pilot or instrument student or commercial students, or if I'm in the simulator, I'm teaching them different maneuvers or some students, um, they're getting ready for their solos. So we're constantly working in the traffic pattern to get their landers perfected so that they can go on solos. I recently just had a student as well um, finish his check ride, so he just got his private pilot license. So getting him prepared for check ride was a lot to do. And then, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then also, um, I do help with Jamelia. I help um, let her know what's going on around the school, help with maintenance, and then um, as a, flight instructor, we also have other responsibilities being duty officer, so making sure that safety around the school, whoever goes on, because people have their licenses. My mm -hmm. student that just received his license, he can now go take flights on his own. So I just have to track those flights and make sure everybody is being safe at the school. So for going back to the discovery flights, is there a certain age requirement for any student that may want to go on a discovery flight? Yeah, all they, they need to be at least eight years of age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and with them being eight years of age, they will need a parent to be mm -hmm. with them. Um, but from the most part, after the discovery flight, they need to be at least 17 years old to start flight training with us and mm -hmm. to obtain their private pilot rating. Can you tell me about the summer camp that you guys are hosting this year? Mm -hmm. I know you guys told us a little bit about it at the College and Career Fair, but can you give us some more details on that? Absolutely, it is called the Solo Flight Academy. Mm -hmm. It'll take place July 6th through the 20th this year. You need to be between the ages of 16 to 18 to attend this program. Um, and then for more information on what you need to apply, I can give that as well, or um, I can attach a website for that. But with all that being said, you'll pretty much come to the flight school for two weeks. We'll house you, we'll feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and Carlin and her and, associates. And then you'll go through a process of, from basically sun up to sundown, you'll come, you'll do rotations throughout the day from plane to grounds to sim. And then in between those, you get the breaks of snacks, 
um, and then breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you also get to meet different students from all different places. So I think it's a great program. I wish I would have known something about it when I was younger. And then to add on to that, during mm -hmm. the two weeks that you're learning how to flight train with them, you know, you'll do grounds, like she said, you'll do grounds, mm -hmm. sims, and flight lessons. And then at the end of the two weeks, mm -hmm. if you studied and you're successful, you get the chance to solo. And not only if you get the chance to solo, but you'll also leave with up to 10 and a half flight hours. So. Mm -hmm. If y'all are interested. This sounds like mm -hmm. an awesome summer camp. And I hope you guys encourage more students to come out and be a part of this one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you guys for being here today. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Of course, it. Shiloh. Thank you. To learn more about the Luke Weathers Flight Academy, visit their website at obap.org slash LWFA. We have to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at a high school that prepares its students to earn their private pilot's license for free. You're watching the award-winning GHS-TV, a nationally recognized student television station. I'm your moderator, Brandon Sewell, coming to you live from the campus of Germantown High School. So GHS-TV tries to model a real working station. I really thought it was cool when I first started studio and all the opportunities that it was able to provide for me. That would be 36 out of 36. It's a rigorous class that demands a lot from students. At times you're, you are going to be thrown into the fire to where you're just going to have to figure it out yourself. Which is really great because then we gain more knowledge. Our teachers will give us how to start but then we're left to make up the whole entire process. It just seems to me it's not enough space in the beginning. If it's not, let's figure out what we can do. They can be a producer, they can be a director, they can work graphics and learn audio, um, they can go out and shoot field reports. Akila, back to you. And it's a challenge to throw them into the environment and say, here's a camera, go out and record uh, this interview and some B-roll. But those are the challenges that grow students to do bigger projects. Welcome to Red Devil News Beat. In GHS TV, we have a variety of shows. We have Crosstalk. Hello and welcome to a new season of GHS TV's award-winning talk show, Crosstalk. We have Insider, which is all about Germantown. Welcome to GHS Insider, the show that's all about the G. Cut to win and cute talent. Wake up, Germantown. It's Wednesday, April 5th. I'm calling you in. Some things that I've learned from this class is that how to work as a team. We learn how to communicate better with people. Something I'll take with me from um, in the future is their slogan, check, double check, and check again. There's so many different things you can do here. I would say take risks. Push yourself further than you think you can go, and we will help guide you there. Go, go Red Devils! Devils. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Crosstalk. For many, interest in aviation starts in high school. East High School School's aviation program introduces their students to the principles of aeronautical decision making, aeroplane systems, and aerodynamics, as well as providing a variety of simulated flight environments. It all prepares them for the Federal Aviation Administration Private Pilot Written Exam. Joining me to talk about the program is Ralph Shrillo, an aviation teacher, and Valentin Trejo, one of his aviation students. Thank you guys for joining me today. You're welcome. So Mr. Ralph, can you tell me about how this program started and why did you guys start it at a high school? So the information that I can give you is that this program started way before I became a teacher. I became a teacher with Shelby County Schools back in 2006 and the program had already been there. Uh, so it's, it's a narrative that I have to give you. I, I think it started out with a uh, 1.5 million dollar grant is what I understand from NASA yeah. and uh, the program started way back then at Wooddale High School and has since then moved over to East High School. So can you provide some specific details about the organizations and the structure of the program? So we offer uh, a curricula of four courses, Intro to Aerospace, Aviation 1, Aviation 2 and Aviation 3. Intro to Aerospace is, is, is a exploratory uh, class for freshmen, mostly freshmen. 
and then uh, past that aviation one, aviation two, and aviation three, we go a little bit more into systems, whether basic aerodynamics, uh, the basic laws that, that govern um, um, private pilot licenses. So for students at East High School, is there a specific enrollment process or can they just come up to you and say, I want to join the class? Well, East High School is a magnet school. We are transportation themed. So besides of aviation, and I don't want to advertise any <laughs> other programs, but we have also a diesel program over there. And uh, as far as I understand is you must have a grade point average roughly somewhere around a C and um, you have to have uh, consistent attendance so you can't be absent more than absent and late more than 15 days I believe throughout the entire school year that would disqualify you or at least put you on probation. So Valentin, what inspired you to want to be a part of this program? I would say the thing that would inspire me was the different types of systems that were included with it. Um, I wouldn't say I started out you know pursuing aviation because I was enrolled within the course and I didn't even know that, but as more time went on and with Mr. Scholl's help, I developed a keen you know, interest and I would say a relationship with aviation to pursue that further. So what do you want to do in aviation after high school? What I want to do f with aviation after high school is to, um, well my ultimate goal is to become a commercial pilot and going on to a uh, accredited university with a part 104 certification to get my different ratings besides from private pilot in order to accomplish that. That's awesome. So are students able to obtain their licenses or any type of certifications while they're going through this program? Yes, uh, so we make it mandatory that every student that enters the program uh, in their 11th grade gets a drone license. So that's regulated by uh, FARs, Federal Aviation Regulations, Part 107. Uh, they have to be 16 years old and they have to pass a written test to get that drone license. Um, as far as private pilot license is concerned, it, it can be cost prohibitive because when you look at going through all the training and, and the books and the medical and the, the fee for the exam, uh, you're looking somewhere around ten to $15,000 and not every parent uh, will have that money to pay that for their students. Luckily though, we have stakeholders that uh, ease that financial burden tremendously. Uh, we, we consider ourselves very, very, very lucky that we have uh, the Black uh, Organization of Black Aerospace mm -hmm. professionals as stakeholders. And one of the offerings that we have uh, at our school is that the students go through a, they have to be at that point 16 years old. Um, to go through a two-week program at Olive Branch Airport and this is all cost paid and basically the, the uh, goal of that particular course is to get the student to solo and so when you look at that that is really a big milestone for anybody to uh, who gets there or pursues their private pilot license uh, I remember mine very vividly. I'm not going to tell you what we <laughs> did, but uh, uh, it was a very uh, vivid uh, and still is a very vivid memory in my mind. And so when you look at the ten to fifteen thousand dollars, that takes about uh, probably about five to six thousand dollars off the, the price tag. Past that, if the students do really well, uh, OBAP offers two to three scholarships with all costs paid to get the private pilot license. So why do you think it's important for students to be able to obtain some certifications and licenses while they're in high school instead of waiting after high school? Well, I mean, you, you, while you go through high school, some of you will be, and as you know, some of you will be 17, 18 years old. Uh, for you to get the private pilot license, the FAA stipulates only that you have to be 17 days, uh, 17, <laughs> 17 <laughs> days old. You just came out of the womb and now, <laughs> You have to be uh, 17 years old, and so uh, if the FAA says uh, 17 is it, then why can't we produce uh, private pilots uh, on a high school level? What's more is that we are actually partnered with Southwest Tennessee Community College, and um, the, the courses that our students take in 11th grade and 12th grade, they are credited over at Southwest. 
So it's, it's, if you look at it, it's, it's a good deal. Can you give me an estimate number of how many students have already obtained their pilot's license? Well, I've been at the school for seven years. Uh, we didn't make it mandatory for them to get their private pilot, I mean their drone pilot license right away. But uh, out of the, the 80, say we have 80 on an average, 85 on an average, everybody needs to get the drone license. So that's 100% right there. And as far as uh, private pilot licenses are concerned, we have six right now working on their private pilot license. So what is that percentage wise? It's a little bit under 10%. That's really yeah. great. So how does this aviation program fit into the everyday high school curriculum? Well, uh, there, there's a paragraph in Federal Aviation Regulations uh, Part 61, which governs the certification of airmen. And that paragraph, uh, to the best of my knowledge, says that you must be able to read, write, speak, and understand the English language. So if you take English in school, that, that would tie right into that program. Uh, when you look at um, basic uh, aerodynamics and working through performance charts, uh, whether they may be on a graph format or whether they are more in a table format, you have to be able to do basic math calculations. You have to be able to interpolate. You have to be able to do, you know, what's 3 times 15 um, without you whipping out your computer and, and trying to or calculator and trying to calculate it out. So, um, you know, the math is applied, science is applied in, in weather theory and meteorology. Um, I don't know whether that answers your question, yes. but uh, you know, everything that you do pretty much. <coughs> Even there's, there's a section in Intro to Aerospace that talks about the history of, of uh, um, aerospace. So even history and social uh, studies come into play. So Valentin, what are some challenges that you face as a student uh, trying to obtain your pilot's license? I guess one of the challenges for that would be um, um, just the consistency of it. I would say, um, um, for me, the drone license and the private pilot knowledge um, test. test that I have both taken and passed, where you have to like consistently study. There's <coughs> a sentence in that, in both of those um, test uh, books, that says, "Do not let the study process drag on." And with that, I feel that's an important factor that a student must overcome in order to be able to gain all that knowledge in a consistent time to be able to take that test. So can you tell me about some other organizations that you guys work with throughout the city? I know you mentioned OBAP, but do you guys work with FedEx or any other um, airplane or aviation? Yeah, yeah, we, we have, um, besides of OBAP, who is a major player in our program, uh, we're looking at Federal Express. I mean, you have one of the biggest airlines, albeit not on the passenger side. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the fleet of Federal Express, they have about six, 650 airplanes. I think that's the last number that I've heard. And somewhere around over 5,000 pilots and over 400,000 employees worldwide. So it's, it's a natural match that we would have Federal Express um, as a um, major stakeholder as well. And uh, besides of that, <clears throat> let me think here, we have some private uh, citizens or uh, individual citizens that, that come in and help out. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking of one who has a, a degree in aeronautical engineering. Uh, I'm working extensively with uh, another individual who works for the city of Memphis and is also a drone pilot for the city of Memphis. So that's just to mention a few of the stakeholders. So can you tell me about the materials that you guys have in a class to help the students understand how it actually feels to be in a plane? Do you guys have simulators? Do they go fly actual planes or look at real planes? Can you tell me about that? Well, for the lay person, uh, it's easy to say we have simulators. But when you look at a simulator, a simulator has to um, duplicate actually the cockpit layout uh, that you see in the actual aircraft that you would be flying for an airline down to the switch and the sound and, and the motion. Uh, so when you say simulator, technically speaking, we don't have any simulators. What we do have are called uh, advanced aviation training devices, otherwise known as AATDs. And so uh, we have two of those in my class, and one of them is a static simulator, meaning that when you sit in there, you have a, a visual display you have an instrument panel in front of you, but the display actually does not move. 
you just get the illusion that when you look at the screen, you see some movement. Uh, on the other end, on the other end of the spectrum, we have a uh, simulator over there, and uh, that one is called a FMX, Full Motion Simulator. This simulator, the FMX, simulates to a degree the movement of, of that airplane. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today and having a wonderful conversation about yep. this awesome program. Thank you for having us, yes. of course, yeah, thank you. To learn more about East High School's aviation program, visit their website at schools.scsk12.org slash East High School. I want to thank my guests for providing new insight on aviation programs here in the Mid-South and working to excel adults and students in their desired career field of aviation. For more program information, please check us out on the web at GHS TV, where we are streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Shallow Sanders, and from all of us at GHS TV, thank you for watching Crosstalk, and I hope to see you again.